update on the college football playoff apocalypse. <laughs> this is wild. This is absolutely wild. So um, Thursday and Friday, everything changed. Thursday, we felt like we were headed in the right direction. Midday Friday, and it, it's it's unclear what that change was or how that happened. There just seemed to be a change in tenor. And Ross Dellinger, I think, had it first, but I, I mean, pretty much every college football insider jumped on it. Uh, that changes had happened, that uh, the Big Ten and the SEC had really been playing nice in the sandbox, and then all of a sudden, uh, they decided that they continued to demand more. And we spent Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday last week talking to sources telling us about an NFL playoff model uh, coming to the P4, and that all of this stuff, and we were telling you, hey, the conferences aren't going away, this is a football-only move, like, it seemed like we were really moving in the right direction. And then midday Friday, everything changed. And nobody's really sure why the Big Ten and the SEC decided to flex their muscles and essentially say, yeah, we haven't changed our stance, by the way. this All this other structure talk is great. Uh, we want more money and we want more access to the championship game. And it really took the air out of a process that most people felt was moving in the right direction where you were going to have the P4 uh, agreeing to a structure and a financial structure, a playoff structure. The TV deal was finally going to get done. And then the SEC and the Big Ten hit the brakes. And I guess the question, Jake, is, is it time for the Big 12 and the ACC to call their bluff? I mean, I, I think at some point you have to kind of say like, hey, like you're just – yeah, I think you got to call their bluff on some level. I, I, I think the, the hard part is that those two conferences don't have the the might of the Big Ten and the SEC. And and I don't know, you know, what your, your leverage would be or your upper hand would be. I, I mean, obviously, you know, folks like ESPN and the rest of the TV partners, you know, need the Big Ten and the SEC, of course. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how whether it's the big the big 12 and the ACC calling the, the their bluff or whether it's a TV situation you know either way on either side of that I don't know how this ends well for anybody because again like I I, I still maintain like I'm not quite sure why you continue to ask for more access and more money when you're getting that very clearly in this setup that we discussed I mean it's very clear that you're you're going to get more AQs in each individual conference. It's very clear that you're probably going to get bye weeks. It's very clear that because of that, you're going to make more money. So what I'm trying to understand is if you're if you're Greg uh, Sankey and, and Tony Petiti, what you know what what do you need to see? What needs to be presented to you for you to feel uh, happy or I guess. Um, you know, content with, with the situation, because I, I like what you said, like, I agree, like that NFL model in college football, I think works great. And then if you just simply roll in more AQs for the SEC and the big 10, that's going to make them more money. So, yeah. so I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't know if you're the big 12 in the ACC, you know, yeah. Do you call their bluff? Okay. If you want to, how do you call their bluff? Because to call someone's bluff, mm. you got to have something, you got to have some type of leverage on your side and frankly, I don't know that the Big 12 and the ACC have a ton of leverage to work with. Here. I don't know that they have any leverage. And I think there's been a lot of debate happening and, and people I've spoken to uh, don't seem to debate anything that the ACC is in a very vulnerable position here um, because they have universities in, in Duke, Carolina, um, Florida State, Virginia. I think to, there is a real question about what Clemson's demand for Clemson is, I think there's significant demand. I think after that, I don't think there's much demand for anybody in that conference. And I look at the big 12 and yeah, I think that you have probably four or five teams that, that, that most people find attractive after that. I don't know that there's a whole lot of demand at the bottom of this football conference. I truly do not. And again, I want to make that very clear people. Uh, I think the number one question that I've been asked is, you know, how, why do you keep saying conferences are going away? We've never once told you conferences are going away. This is a football problem. This is a unique football problem. And I think it is very clear 
that the powers that be in college football thought they were all moving in the same direction. And the Big Ten and the, the SEC on Friday at some point changed their mind on that. And I, I do think at some point you either need to acquiesce and bow down or you need to stand and fight. And if you're the Big 12, I think you have a lot more to lose here. I, I truly do. I, I think the, the ACC has been so it has been dealing with instability for so long. I think the Big 12 has not had that same set of circumstances. They were able to expand uh, not once but twice. They were able to secure their flanks. Uh, they brought new revenue in. They brought much larger TV audiences in. And you feel like the Big 12 is in a better spot. But is anybody in a better spot? Is the is the ACC in a better spot than the Big Twelve or vice versa? I really don't think so. Yeah, and I, and I think what's interesting about the Big 12's path is that you know when Texas and Oklahoma were leaving the conference early to go to the SEC, everyone said the Big Twelve was burning down, and you know this conference is dead and it's over. And 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 I feel like they handled the Texas and Oklahoma departure really well. It didn't feel like there was a lot of drama behind it. It felt like it was much more of just a business transaction and everyone was kind of on the same page and, and it just kind of got done. Whereas in the ACC, I feel like it's been very heated. It's been very emotional. It's been, you're in you know, court. Yeah. Like I, I, I think that it, that like, it's just been a totally different thing to which I say, okay, that tells me that the big 12 again, you know, I'm going to keep saying it. I do think the big 12 plays better in the sandbox with the big boys than, than the ACC does. But, but to what end, that's the question. Because if you have, if you have a situation where, where the big 10 and the SEC are going to go and do their own thing or, you know, whatever that looks like, you know, if that were to play out, they're going to need the big 12 because they need teams. You, you can't just take two conferences and, and think that you're just going to go out and run the world. There's not enough teams there. There's not enough money in those two conferences on their own to to go ahead and survive long term. So I think at a minimum you would need the Big 12, and that would be if I'm Brett Yormark, that would be the the leverage point that I'd be trying to hammer home. Like like, hey, I get it. You guys have control. You guys are the big dogs. You make the most money. You you know you're in the college football playoff the most. Totally get it. Totally respect that. Nothing against that. But at the same time, to to move forward in a healthy direction on the football field in collegiate athletics, like we got to have a system that actually works. So again, we come back to this question of why is it that Greg Sankey and Tony Petiti decided it would be a good idea to kill the momentum in this conversation. It's a because, very interesting conversation. Like I, I very interesting like question. Something th these guys are not stupid. And I only say that because you don't go out and do this and slow things down unless something was said or a certain kind of conversation was had that you didn't like that forced you to play your hand. And I'll just continue to go back and say what I've said. You cannot simply if you are the Big 10 in the SEC and, and the implication here and I'm told pretty point blank that the, the Big Ten and the SEC have not said, we're out, we're walking away. That's never been the conversation. What the Big Ten and the, the SEC are saying is, we will take your brightest and your best, and we will walk away with them, and we will leave you stranded. They're talking to the Virginia Techs of the world. They're talking to the smaller bottom of the conference universities, that is, we always talk about on this show, have not had success on the field, do not drive viewership and do not drive revenue. That's the biggest fear. If you're the Big 12 in the ACC, it's not that all of your universities are going to get left out. No, no, friends. It's that you are going to lose the top 25% of your conference and they're going to go play ball with the SEC and the Big 10. That is your biggest fear. It's not that somehow the Big 10 and the ACC are going to walk away and do their own thing because that's not possible. Nobody is going to ignore the entirety of the Big 12 in the ACC. That's not going to happen. The thing, if you're the Big 12 in the ACC, you worry about is you're going to lose your brands and you're going to become a G5. That's your biggest insecurity and your biggest fear. How do you stop that? That's what the, the, the powers that be in the Big 12 and the ACC are talking about in football. We're talking about football. This isn't every other sport. This is a football conversation. And the other thing that you better remember is there's one group that are going to make this decision, and it's the TV powers that be. 
Because without the TV powers, you're not getting on a grant of rights, and that includes the SEC, who I would remind you, just signed a lucrative extension with ESPN. And I'd also remind you that NBC, Fox, and CBS all have a piece of the Big Ten in a brand new deal. So the TV folks are the ones that are going to make this decision. And what's best for TV is that all of their partners coexist and get along. What's best for TV is that NFL motto. We have routinely and repeatedly spoken to sources at the top of the TV industry and sports, and they have all said that they are in favor and unanimously, which never happens ever do all of the people we talk to say the same thing and are in favor of the same thing. There is no question that our sources in the TV industry want the NFL model for the college football playoff system. That's what they all want. So my feeling is eventually that's what we're all going to get. The biggest question is who is going to get the Big Ten and the SEC to back down? Because they want an inordinate, a disproportionate amount of the revenue that comes from the college football playoff uh, structure, whatever it might be, on television. They want a disproportionate amount of that money to a crippling effect if you are the ACC and the Big 12. And I I just think, uh, is untenable a big word? Yeah, it is. I don't know. Is it too big of a word? Yeah, probably. But it is, if it's not untenable, it is as close to a miserable existence that as you can get if you're the Big 12 in the ACC. And I think that, you know, the 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 Big 10 and the SEC uh probably took some notes out of the Pac-12 situation. I I mean, you know, what what better lesson to learn out of that situation than hey, you you got to be as financially secure as possible. So if you have a leverage play that you can execute on, like why wouldn't you? And and that's the hard part with college football right now is that it is volatile. It is you either win or you don't. And if you don't, you're out. Like yeah. that's what we're talking about here. And I think that's the difficult part. The, the, you know, I feel like everyone romanticizes like the small town school and college football that, you know, plays on Friday nights. And like, you yeah. know, like I, I feel like we romanticize that. And while I'm sure that still takes place, the Big Ten and the SEC are no longer concerned with that. They are concerned with making sure that they continue to grow their margin over the other two. And and I understand that. I'm not criticizing them for it. But I think at some point, someone's got to step in on some level and say, hey, like, yeah, we understand you guys have had the success, but but it's not just about you guys. I mean, you you if you're going to do this, you have a responsibility to ensure that college football is healthy. I, and I believe that if you're going to go out and you're going to flex your muscle and you're going to say you're the biggest and baddest and deserve the most money and, you know, you should get all this stuff, then that inherently means you're responsible if college yeah. football goes sideways. And, and I truly believe this is bad for the fans. If And what's the worst case scenario here? What would be the worst would they, that the Big Ten and the SEC take who? The top five teams in each conference? Yeah, probably, and then they form and, their own structure, yeah. and and you you're left with uh, Twig and Berries in the ACC in the Big Twelve. Yeah, I mean that feels like that's the worst case scenario here. But again, I don't see ESPN letting that happen. I think ESPN has a massive investment in the the success of the Big Twelve, mm -hmm. and I think if you do not have your brands with access to the championship of college football, that's that you're not going to thrive in any way, shape, or form, and I I think you are you are killing a generation of football fans. I I I truly think if you're a 16 year old kid right now, it is I, I don't know what you're hanging on to. I I, re, I truly do not. I I again I am somebody that as far as I can remember, I've always been a college football fan, mm -hmm. and I have always I have cried over Notre Dame football as a the the the, you know, the rocket Ishmael holding on the kick return. I cried about that, right? Like, I mean, it is, those are the emotions that we're talking about. Yeah. Those, it, it, truly they are, right? But this is a 16-year-old kid crying about BYU football? Is a 16-year-old kid crying about Utah football? Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think we are, we are absolutely crippling the next generation of college football fan. And I don't know how you fix that. I, I You fix that by giving everybody a, a shot at the championship, but that's not realistic. 
But but that's when I say like I I think that if if the Big Ten and the SEC were to do this and and you know take the top half of the Big Twelve and the ACC let's say and go off and form their own structure you know whatever it might look like right there's a million ways you could do it but whatever it might look like you know I, I still maintain for college football in the big picture there has to be a secondary setup there has to there be there certainly does there, I mean you you can't have you know all these other schools just hung out to dry. And I understand they're in that position because they have not won and they have not prioritized athletics to a high enough level, or maybe they're just simply not good enough at raising capital to make sure their facilities are top notch, which, you know, then prevents them from recruiting. And we all know the vicious cycle, whatever the case may be as to why you're a secondary team. I just think that you, whether it's because of ESPN and the TV partners or not, you have to have a secondary you know, college football playoff esque thing. Like there has yeah. to be, you know, the NIT of college football, if you will. There's got to be some type of something that the second tier can compete for. Because without that, you're you're basically uh, uh, incentivizing these schools to to put their money elsewhere. I mean, what what is the point at at, at that stage of everybody playing football? can't get in? Yeah, everybody can't get in. Yeah, and, and I I think it's something that. I, a lot of people don't understand. It is not a participation sport. It is a it is a a, a dominate and conquer sport. Yeah. That's what football is, and it's why in basketball, so many people are against expanding the NCAA tournament, which I think is going to happen because not everybody should get in. You have to earn it on the on the field with your performance. And I think we are if if we're going to play this game where we're moving towards a system where everybody gets in, I think it dilutes the it dilutes the product. It takes the 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 uniqueness of getting to the you know four team college football playoff away. Well I and I and I think, you know, in my mind at least, I, I don't see it as everybody getting in. I see it as everybody needs to have the opportunity to earn their way in. That's a very different thing. Right. So it's not saying, hey, like so, like for the Big Ten and the SEC, it's not saying that if they were to take the top half of these of the Big Twelve and the ACC, it's not saying that all those teams are in, but they need those teams to form a competitive setup to allow people to earn their way into whatever that you know, whether it's a twelve totally team agree. or whatever the hell yeah. it is, and and that's why I say like on the secondary level, you got to have that same thing. And the same structure works, the same thought process works. And but does it make me, money for TV? Well, I was going to say, don't tell me people aren't going to watch. You can't tell me. But you're not going to get the same viewership, obviously. You're not going to be getting 30 million people. But I do think you can get, you know, like five, seven million people. Yeah, sure. That's it, but it, And I think that's a CBS Sports Network. That's yeah. a, yeah. right? Because now that that you you have, I just think the TV game has changed. I think ESPN, CBS, Fox, NBC to a lesser extent, I think they're going to make the decision. And I think they know that they're in that position because if, if your TV partners who, uh, again, they talk on a regular basis, I don't know, this might have been one of the things that inflamed people the most on Friday when I said that Fox and ESPN have had long-standing conversations about this. Oh, they Marty, have. That's BS. You don't know what you're talking about. Come on. And, and I, I think there's this belief that, they're warring factions. They're not. What's good for ESPN and college football is very good for Fox, CBS, and NBC. Well, and I think there was a lot of talk about CBS at some point getting back into college football. You know, you, you can't tell me that CBS is like, hey, like we we lost the SEC to ESPN and we're not. And they only like, have a very small piece of the pie. Don't forget that. Yeah. I mean, it, to, I, I would agree with you. I think there is. This bring this opens a window for CBS to be a much larger player. Yeah, it's a money, it's a money position. You're going to have to want to pay for it. But I I don't know. The only way this gets better is with more money. But every time you go back to the well and ask for more money, you, you're you, all you're doing is is giving the Big Ten and the SEC an opportunity to take more money. It's not a. It, when does it become equitable? Because again, I just point out the Big Ten is not a great league in any sport. It's not a great league. It got better with the meltdown of the Pac 12. There's no question about that. 
but it's not a great league. You're you're not a deep league. The SEC is a very deep and very good product. Yeah. And with their rise in basketball in the last several years, that certainly has helped them. But it, when is the last time the Big Ten was the best football league in the country? I, I don't know either because yeah. it, it's been too long. Well, I, Monty, Michigan won the national championship. Yeah, that might be true, but that doesn't make you the best league top to bottom. They but, have very good they have very good TV audiences. Yeah. And that's got real value in it. There's no question about it. But at some point, there ha- you have to find the equity play in all of this. Yeah, and, and I do agree with what you were saying earlier. Like, if you're the Big 12 in the ACC, you have to go, you know, and find what your leverage is going to be. I mean, and you, that, you have to create it. That leverage is the NCAA tournament. That yeah. leverage is basketball. And it, at some point, we can keep having a football discussion, but at some point, that's going to come into it. But because that's I say, like these, the SEC and the Big Ten are. I mean, I'm just, I'm just envisioning these folks sitting at a table, right, and having this conversation. Yeah. And and you're you're Brett Yormark, and you're you're talking to Greg Sankey and 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 Tony Petiti, and you're like, hey man, like we're the best basketball conference in this country, man. Like, and and it really is not all that close. I mean, the SEC, as you said, got better. You know, has been getting better, but but we are we are the best basketball conference in the country. And that definitely counts for something. And and by the way, I do think that they are going to be better on the football field than people are giving them credit for in the preseason. Um, so if you're, if you're Brett Yormark, you have to find a way from a money business standpoint to leverage these two and force them to go the way you want them to go. Cause that's the thing. They're going to go either way. They're going to, they're moving forward on something. We're not just going to sit here and do nothing. So the conversation isn't, hey, are they going to move or not move? No, they're moving. It's just, hey, which direction do you want them to go and how can you get them to go that direction? Yeah, and I don't think everybody belongs in. I just don't. But that's just me. I look at I look at the the year that, that these leagues are having. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Houston, I'm not even sure it's arguable is the best team in the country. Mm-hmm. Right, I, I I'm not sure that's arguable, but Purdue's having a great year, um, which is a big win. But w- where do we go next in the Big Ten? Right, you know where we go next? We go to North Carolina, which is why I think North Carolina is such a big deal. But if you look at Illinois down at twelve, you got to go all the way down to twelve. Yet you have Baylor. Uh, yet you have Iowa State. Yet you have Arizona. I mean, you you have the Big Twelve's the best league in the country. Yeah. The best well, league in the, the country. I mean, look at how many Big 12 teams are in the, the 10 to 20 range. I mean, that, that's Look at loaded, BYU bro. at 21 and 8. Yeah, I mean, that's loaded. Yeah, I, I think you look at BYU. Um, certainly, it's a big one there. I, I Obviously, Kansas is not having the year that Kansas thought they would have. But the Big 12 is is well represented in the AP Top 25. Yeah. There, there's no doubt. All right, less of us, more of you here on the Monty Show. Make sure you hit the like button. Who's the first one in? Wow, look at that. Mountain Mama, first one in. Hit the like button. Yes, sir. Mike, always good to see you. Maury, our favorite Floridian, good to see you. Pete Forte, Dakota Tubbs says, happy daylight savings time to all the Monty Show Jagoffs. We got to talk about that later, bro. Struggling a little bit? Blows, dude. Absolutely. Dude, I I go to bed last night. I usually go to bed around, I try to start laying down around 830, 845, and then Hopefully I'm asleep by like 9, 15, 9, 20. Dude, I lay down last night just wide awake, bro. Like not even close to being ready to go to sleep. Don't fall asleep till like midnight at least. And choppy night of sleep to say the least. I was out until three o'clock and I had that little bit of a cough thing that, you you know, some, yes. you just here in the desert, you wind <laughs> up with a little dry cough thing. You know, uh, conundrum. Good morning to you. 70. Oh, are we over 75,000? Oh, are we? I did not. I did not notice that. Okay. Yes. Wow. Almost 76,000. 75,682. We like it. We like it a lot. Appreciate all of you. Thank you. Um, uh, Maury says only jagoffs and casuals don't hit the like button and subscribe. Thank saying, you. Dude. Come on. So I did. What's up, Gary? Uh, RJC man, Calford to the ACC was such a brilliant monkey wrench into the Big Ten SEC plan. Uh, that now they're acting like FSU is not going to end well. 
Power is money, and conversely, money is power. Yeah, I, I don't think Calford helped the ACC at all, other than the number of teams in your league, which is substantial. I don't think Calford – I think SMU was an embarrassment. Yeah, I mean, what do those three teams have in common? Oh, that's right. They never win anything. <laughs> like, well, not honestly. recently. Again, you keep writing off what Cal and Stanford have done in football, but, and I don't but, think you but, can do okay, that. Okay, but hear me out. Why does it matter what they did 20 years ago? Because it wasn't 20 years ago. It was, though. No, it wasn't. It was, okay. When's the last time Stanford was in the conversation in football? Seriously. Was Mark like Hales. 13? I'm not, I'm not doing the Stanford thing again. Okay. I'm not doing the Stanford thing again. But, but, but you look at what Harbaugh and Shaw accomplished at Stanford. They did very good things at Stanford. It's it's not like Stanford is is sucked for 20 years. I think there needs to be some perspective. Has Cal been relevant? They have not. I 100% agree. Cal has not been relevant. Stanford has been relevant. I, I think you look no further than Christian McCaffrey and Andrew Luck. They have been relevant. Uh, Mark Hale, so they want to take their ball and leave if they don't get their way. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they want to do that. I think they want their way. I think they want more money and more access. And I think the G5, the PAC, the the Big 12, excuse me, and the ACC are not so willing to do that. Nor would I be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Anyway, RJC man. Notre Dame and NBC prevented ES. Re no, they did not. Uh, conundrum. Somebody wake up Jake. What do you mean, somebody wake up, Jake? Uh, Chad Carter. Good morning, good people. Hello. Sankey does not like being told no ever about anything. Ever about That's anything. What I'm saying. Nobody's going to say no to him. It's just a matter of how you want to take your medicine. What are you going to say yes to? Yeah. You're not going to say no. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Uh, morning, Monty. Get surgery. Left legs. to. Morning, Monty. Get surgery. Left legs today. What you're you're getting surgery today, yeah, Matt Ritson. Can, can you explain? Can you, yeah, I don't. What do you? What do we? What are elaborate? we talking about? RJC man, Stanley overplaying his hand, alligator mouths humming. What are we what doing are we already? Do, yeah. What like? What, what are we doing, Chrissy? Uh, when do the discovery start? Both cases. Let's see who will withdraw their case first and settle out of court. Well, I think we've seen with Florida State and the ACC there is a willingness to settle, and I think there is a willingness to allow Florida State to walk away for the right price. For the right price. Mm -hmm. And I'll be that that is one of the the things that this whole if you make an agreement where you have and again, we had been hearing passionately for several days last week, hey, this NFL model's got real legs, people are excited about it. Okay, great. And then all the conversation about structure stopped until an equitable revenue agreement came to pass. So I, I, I think the ACC Florida State situation is, is very much in flux based on what's going to happen with these conversations. Uh, good morning, Lopes fan, Gabe. Everybody hit the like button. Where are we at? 500 views, only 35 likes. Hit the like button. That helps the uh, channel grow. Uh, let's see, Edward Wayner. Uh, like number 14, hit the like button, y'all. See, it's a common theme here. It's a common theme. Jay uh, McClenahan, the TV networks could step in and get it resolved. They control the coin. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Chrissy, leverage would be that all in the conference allow the Big Ten and the SEC to have their own playoff and break off. I, there's just no way that's going to happen. And you can threaten that, but what does that in practical application look like? Are, are you telling me that you're leaving Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, Miami? They're just out of that. You're telling me that you're leaving K-State, Utah, BYU. They're just out of that. That makes I, no yeah. sense. No way for that to work. No way. I, I, they, You're not going to, and I think Greg Sankey knows this, and it's why he keeps talking about this publicly. Nobody like Greg Sankey or at Greg Sankey's level talks publicly without a reason. Greg Sankey only goes on Feinbaum when he needs something said, mm -hmm. when he needs to get something out. And what has he always said? This is a national sport. We need representation and regulation on a national level. 
which is why the NCAA is not going anywhere. And the other thing that I think is so important is you're not going to have the Big Ten and the SEC just walk away from everybody else. You, how much money are you leaving on the table at that point? A lot. A lot. A I, significant yeah. amount. And again, I would ask you, how much money are you not making from the college football playoff at that point? Uh, a lot. Because what is what are you, what have you left ESPN with at that point? You've left them with diminished assets, and the SEC and the the ESPN ABC are partners. And does it make a lot of sense for Greg Sankey to go to Jimmy Pataro to ESPN and say, "Yeah, we're out"? I don't think it does. No, no, I don't think it does. Well, and I think that's what you have to be careful with if you're the SEC specifically is is ruining a good thing. You know, I mean, you you clearly have control. Um, you're clearly represented very well every year. Uh, you know, you're represented more than pretty much any you other have conference. An incredible TV package. Yeah, you so, have one of the few successful SEC network type setups because I think we all know that those conference and university level networks. There are very few that were six. The Longhorn Network never got off the ground. Yeah, you look at like BYU TV is probably the only call it what you want, tier three provider that really, really worked. And now tier three rights are gone. They don't exist anymore. And you look at ESPN and what ESPN provides to the SEC. The SEC is not, not going to do anything that diminishes ESPN. They won't. They need them. It's too good of a partnership. And now let's not forget ESPN going direct to consumer next year because that streaming component, whether you want it to be or not, you can get on board with streaming or you can go hang out with with George Klyovkov and the, the folks at the pack. Oh, wait, they don't exist anymore. Right. Because they never got on board with streaming. They never got their network off the ground. They never did a distribution deal. You're not going to walk away from ESPN or damage them. And I would remind you, you don't have any way to walk away from ESPN and ABC if you're the SEC. You're going to have to find a solution. Why do you think the Big Ten and the SEC are strong arming the Big 12 and the ACC? Wouldn't they just walk away? But they can't, and they're not going to. It, it is, it would be, the revolution would be. That's why I, I don't think that using words like apocalypse is too much. I, I mean, you're you're talking about college football being at a point where where there's real danger. I mean, if you mishandle this situation mm. and, and again, it's going to be hard to do that because there's so many people involved, yeah. you know? So I, I, I think that, you know, obviously a logical setup will come out of this thing, but, but if, if there was to be a, like a, you know, again, think of think like, look at NIL, right? If we like, to me, NIL has been kind of a mess. I think we all agree. On yeah. that. You know, yeah. if you were to get some yes. type of setup, that goes up the alley of NIL in terms of how messy it is, that's going to be really bad for college football. Totally you can't agree. have that. Yeah. I. What is the best outcome here? I, I, the answer is I, I don't know. I think the best outcome is you have, I, I still maintain the NFL model is the best outcome. Mm -hmm. It makes the most sense. 64 teams. You can roll in the extra money in the auto qualifiers for these two. Like it, it, it keeps the bulls intact. It yeah. keeps everybody's making money. I mean, it accomplishes everything you want it to accomplish. Unless you're the SEC and the Big Ten who want a guaranteed access to make sure that they play for a national championship revenue. Because that's what they're asking for. Let's stop calling it revenue. And the SEC and the Big Ten want to make sure that Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, and Ohio State play for a national championship every year. Yeah. And unless they are just absolutely putrid, which it's cyclical, I totally get it. But unless they're absolutely terrible, that those four teams are going to play for a national championship every year. That's what those conferences want. Mm -hmm. Is that realistic? If if you, I don't think it probably is. I don't think it probably is. Georgia wasn't even involved this year. I think that's why we are where we are. Uh -huh. Ohio State, I think that's why we are where we are. Well, I I, I mean, I, I understand why Greg Sankey would be upset about that. I mean, you know, I, I think we can all agree that Georgia was one of the four best teams in the country. But again, in the current format that everybody approved, 
you know, your conference is going to eat itself. And that's what happened. 